You'd be surprised how many demonologists I run into that don't know jack about demons and other negative spirits. And it's very interesting how egotistical they can be when they just have no idea what it's really like. <laughs> For those who do not know, demonology is the study of demons and other negative entities. It involves investigating their origins, characteristics, powers, and behaviors associated with these entities. They often explore various religions, folklore, mythologies, and cultural perspectives to understand the role and the influence that demons have in these different types of societies. The field of demonology can be explored through various angles, such as different religious backgrounds, folklores, cultures, and different psychological perspectives. Typically, from what I've noticed, demonology is kind of more studied through Catholicism, and some there are some Christians that do study demonology, but it's mostly in Catholicism. To actually get an official exorcism, you would have to contact the Vatican. It's actually a lot to do. And, you know, they're going to make you do certain things, and you have to fill certain requirements like see a doctor, go to a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever, and you have to meet their requirements and it costs a lot of money. Personally, when it comes to this field, I like to also include all negative entities because this world isn't so black and white like many try to make it out to be, especially on the astral realm because technically a lot of these entities dwell on the astral realm and the other realms within the astral realm. And like I said, it's not just one entity. You have many different kinds of entities that are not just demonic or demons that can do similar things that can oppress people. So when I talk about demonology, I include all the negative like entities as well. And honestly, when I help people with their hauntings, I would say the majority of the time it's not even demon problems. Most of the time it's thought forms and negative earthbound spirits and elementals. So, you know, I'm not saying that demonic hauntings aren't a thing. They absolutely are, but they're not as prevalent as the media makes them out to be. I really wanted to talk about this in a video because I noticed a trend in popularity and you know it is near Halloween you know you get all the horror movies and things so people get really you know curious and they think oh well you know it's easy on TV I'm gonna be a, a badass exorcist or a demonologist like Ed and Lorraine Warren and it's like it's not like what they portray it to be on television or movies, I'm telling you. And to even want to get involved, you need to think to yourself, why? Why do you even want to get involved? Is it because you think it looks cool? Does it? Do you think it makes you look edgy? Do you think you're going to get a lot of money from it? Like, what are your reasons? You really got to think to yourself about it. Because actually, it can be scary. And not only can it be scary, it can be dangerous. One thing I also noticed is that people think, oh, I'm a licensed demonologist. I got a license and I'm ordained and blah, 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 blah. 
That's cool, that's great, and I'm sure you learned a lot through the course material. However, like any profession, it's not something where you just get your degree or your license or your certificate and then boom, now you're going to be a professional or an expert. That's not how it works in the real world. So like doctors, for example, yeah, they go through their schooling, they get their papers, they take tests, then they have to go through a residency program where they, you know, work on live patients. Like, they have to practice under the advisement of a doctor. Like, they can't just be like, haha, I'm going to be a doctor. Oh, I just got my papers, now I'm going to do surgery the next day. Nope, you can't just do it like that. So, same thing with demonology. It's like, just because you read a bunch of books and you got your paper saying you're licensed doesn't mean, you know, that you can just go out and everything's fine and dandy. You need field experience, okay? And until you have that field experience, you don't know jack. You don't. I'm sorry, you don't. Doing all the research and whatnot is one half of the process. Field experience is the other half. It's like, there are some entities, well first of all, demonology don't know all the entities that exist, right? That's why they studied the different folklores and cultures because, you know, demonic entities, other spirits may come up with other names or be labeled as other things. But, you know, not all demonic hauntings are textbook. Not all you know, negative entity hauntings are textbook that you're gonna find in a textbook. Nope, I've learned that the hard way. And it's like, until you fully experience it, I'm sorry, you don't know shit. The research in the books and the courses do have a nice foundation, but that's all it is. That's all it is. You know, other entities, demonic entities, non-demonic entities, human entities, whatever. It's like they all have their specific pattern in ways that they oppress and haunt people and do what they do. And it's not going to be in a textbook. Each haunting and attachment is unique to the person. Why? Because every person handles certain stressors differently. So one way that a demon or a negative entity may oppress or haunt one person will be different because let's say one person is afraid of the dark and the other person isn't. Well, you know, it'll be easier for that negative entity to use the dark against one person but not the other. Or let's say one person's afraid of snakes and the other person's not afraid of snakes. Well, that one that's not afraid of snakes, that entity ain't gonna be using snakes to scare them. Do you get my drift? You get my drift? It's like each person has their own triggers, their own traumas that those negative entities will work on to, you know, pretty much trigger their victim. The other thing is, not every single haunting pattern or behavior or even like appearance is documented for these entities. Now, you know, you have some entities that have been documented from thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, right? But the thing is, like we have animal species here in this realm, this world we're living in, we have entities, same thing. It's like you have so many species that humans cannot even conceptualize, right? To even let alone write up in a book or in several books. There are so many entities that you couldn't even fill up a hundred books to get them all. Nope. Even if the books had a thousand pages each. Nope. And you know, humanity is only capable of being able to fathom information to a certain degree. So it's like, we don't even conceptualize all that there is or could be because we as humans are not made to do that. The other thing is when identifying a negative entity, whether it's a demon or not a demon, it's, you, again, you can follow the steps in demonology in the courses, but it's like there are other entities that follow 
similar patterns and do the same things that, you know, makes it difficult to identify the entity. And to be honest, I feel like the demonologist should have mediumship abilities to even be able to successfully identify certain entities. Now, don't get me wrong. If you see someone possessed crab walking backwards up a wall, yeah, probably it's demonic or levitating and, you know, they're yeeting furniture that's bigger than them. Yeah, probably demonic. But most cases aren't like that. I would say 99% of cases aren't even like that. But that's why it's important to have certain skills like clairvoyance, right? So it's like, for me, it's easier to identify entities because I can see them and my spirit guides will show them to me if they're trying to hide because a lot of them do hide. A lot of them shapeshift. So it's like, well, you know, you're seeing one entity shapeshift and it could look like five different ones. And so how's a demonologist going to know if it's five different entities versus just one playing games? A lot of them can't tell. A lot of them can, but a lot of them cannot. Thought forms, negative earthbound spirits, negative elementals can shapeshift. That's just one example. A lot of them can cause sleep paralysis. And there's actually other entities that can possess a person. It's not just demons. Now, you know, it's rare. Again, that's a rare skill for a negative entity to have that is not a demon, okay? But there are negative entities that can possess the living. And I'll give you some examples. When you have demonized or malevolent earthbound spirits, absolutely. And then you have negative elementals. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Elementals. Oh God. They're a whole can of worms and they're tricky AF because they're like demons, but they're like, you know, earthy elemental things. And yeah, I actually watched my friend deal with the case that dealt with one and just by observing, I've learned so much. But because it's not my case, I can't talk about it. But I will say, just watching her do that case, I had learned so much. Now, if you're able to distinguish the entities apart into knowing what is what, then it will be easier to banish. And that is very important. You want to banish an entity. If it's an earthbound spirit, you know, the best case scenario is you get them to cross over. But, you know, you get some pain in the you know what kinds and they don't want to cross over. So the next step is to banish them, unfortunately. But you need to be able to know the difference, to discern the difference. And again, you got to know the difference. Is it a haunting or is it an attachment? Now, you know, if a person moves and they're still having problems, it is an attachment more than likely. However, you don't want to have to be like, oh, sorry, you got to move now. And then they spent all that money and then they moved and then they're still having problems. That's not cool. So it's better just to get it from the get-go than to just guess. Let's get into the dangers. So when you are working with somebody and you're trying to help them either identify or banish or both, like an entity, a negative entity, there are many risks that you need to be aware of. And I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm trying to bring you back to reality. Hup, to goes reality. Hup. Okay, I'm just kidding. No, but seriously, some of y'all need to be brought to reality because you get in this field and then you're like, oh shit. Yeah, you you don't want to you don't want to get um spiritually bitch slapped by a negative entity. Nope. I've been spiritually bitch slapped before quite a few times because I thought I was the shit and I was not the shit and I got my ass beat. So don't do what I did and take your time and understand what you're getting into. So again, when you're trying to kick out or, you know, um, identify a haunting, they can lash out at you and the person you're trying to help. And they can mess with your health, the other person's health. 
They can mess with the health of your loved ones. It's not just you and the person you're trying to help. Everybody around you is affected. Why? Because it's easier to get to a person by affecting their loved ones than it is by affecting them personally. Unfortunately, that's just how it be. Another thing, paranormal activity. If you get in this field, you're going to start having paranormal activity if you haven't already. And the other thing is too, the person you're helping, their paranormal activity can increase and get worse until the problem is fixed because that is the entity panicking because they know they're on their way out and they're going to try to stop you any way that they can. And that's why, you know, I'm listing some of these dangers because they're going to be desperate and try to get you to stop. And these are just some of the ways they will try to get you to stop. Misfortunes and accidents. Um, you hear about stories, you know, on TV, in the movies, online, where someone mocked a haunted item and the next day they get into a car accident or they have a heart attack. Or here's a good one, Post Malone. Didn't he touch the Dybbuk box and then he got into like a series of accidents? Yeah. And he, all he did, he wasn't even doing any demonology things. He was just around things you shouldn't be. Misfortunes such as like financial loss. Maybe you stepped in a hole and you broke your ankle or you tripped down the stairs. Or I don't know, you know what I'm saying, right? Um, your pets can even get affected, unfortunately. And a lot of times they will bear the majority of the force because they're not as strong as us physically, unfortunately, and it's sad. You can suffer attachments. You know, you, you help somebody with a really bad haunting and you've been working with them for a while and it doesn't even have to be for a while. That haunting could become your attachment. It sucks. And then you have other forms of attacks. You can have psychic attacks. You can have SA, I'm abbreviating that word for obvious reasons, but SA attacks. Um, yeah, it's not fun at all. And uh, astral attacks, nightmares, sleep paralysis. Yeah. So why did I get into this field? Well, if you haven't learned from other videos or from the Lights of Midnight podcast, I myself went through a traumatic haunting. Okay. And it was so traumatizing that I kind of feel like part of it had me become awakened or it opened my third eye, like kind of forced it open. It kind of forced me to open it in a way because how are they going to scare me if I can't see <laughs> some of these entities, you know, and or experience them? Because I was never the type of person who was afraid of the dark. I wasn't really afraid of anything as a kid or even like, you know, now. I wasn't really ever afraid of anything. I loved my snakes. I loved my bugs. Like, I don't ever have a problem with that kind of stuff. And so they needed to alter their haunting tactics in order to affect me. So I started to be able to hear things talking to me. And I'll be like, I'm trying to sleep. What's going on? Like, why are you telling me to open my eyes? I'm trying to close my eyes because I'm tired. Or like just seeing things pacing around my room. Yeah, not a fun time. And all the astral attacks, OMG, OMG. You know, I kind of started this journey learning how to fight on the astral realm just because I had so many astral attacks and nightmares and things. And I was like, you know what, F you, I am going to beat yo ass and defend myself and I'm not going to take this abuse anymore and you know what it worked I studied my butt off on how to astral project and I do have a few videos on astral projection if you want to uh watch those but it's like I needed to know I needed to be able to defend myself and that's what I did and you know as time progressed you know I was doing my dream journals 
and writing everything down so I can analyze everything and come up with different tactics and battle plans. I know it's weird. I'm a Capricorn. That should be an explanation enough. But um, seriously, that's how I got into this. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm not scared anymore. Like I can handle this. And then I was noticing how many other people were experiencing the same stuff that I was experiencing. And I was like, mm, I don't want these people to experience what I experience. So I might as well start a YouTube channel. And honestly, the YouTube channel started as like a experience, like journal for everyone. And I wanted it to be a safe place for others to share their experiences. And eventually it turned out to me helping other people with the same experiences because I already went through it. So I already knew what to do. And then as my mediumship skills developed over time, I started to learn more and more about different entities and different techniques on how to deal with them. And I thought it would be very important to share that knowledge. So that is why I am in this field. Though I will say I stopped giving myself labels because I learned that when you give yourself labels, you're putting yourself in a box and it limits the capabilities or the potential of things that you are able to do. And so I don't really label myself as a demonologist, but essentially I am a type of demonologist. So my advice for those who are interested in getting involved, I have a list here. I have so many things. So here we go. So before you jump in this field, ask yourself these questions. Are you ready to be haunted? Are you ready to suffer some weird ass illnesses you never thought were possible? Are you ready to have your belief system turned upside down and make you question everything you thought you knew? Are you ready for other people to mock you, to question your sanity, criticize you, say that you're the devil? And then before you get into this field, understand the dangers, do as much research as you can. I mean, I don't think a person needs to have a license or a certificate to be a demonologist. I think it's bull crap. Just like college these days, it's like you're really only just paying for a piece of paper and all you're really doing is reading from books. I mean, I could do that by myself without spending the money for a full college degree or whatever. I'm mad I went to college and spent $40,000 when I could have just picked up books and learned myself. Same thing with demonology, you could just do it that way. And again, field experience is key. I recommend working with other mediums. And that is because if you're not a medium yourself or if you are a medium, it's always good that you can check your work and make sure you know, you're know you're doing the right thing and you're on the right path. Document everything, every case, every experience, every dream, because spirit will talk to you through your dreams. And if you're not a medium, they'll still speak to you through your dreams or ashram experiences. And things you thought were dreams were actually ashram experiences. So you need to document everything. Also, you can go back because, you know, you'll get through cases and you'll be like, what did I do for that other one? And then you can go back and you can reference the material. So document everything. Oh, most importantly, before you even dick around in this, protect yourself. Learn how to protect yourself. Come up with different systems of protection. And we have a podcast episode on Lights at Midnight for just protection. So listen to that. You can listen to it anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Don't let your beliefs put you in a box. Don't let your ego put you in a box. Also, your ego can uh, stop you from learning the truth and new things and valuable information. So you can't be egotistical, first of all, in this field because there's no such thing as an expert in demonology or the paranormal. Because like I said, there are so many things that humans can't even conceptualize and there are so many things that exist that we never even knew existed. So there's no way to become an expert. Not only that, the demons that you think you know and you think that you know their powers and their abilities and so on and so forth, again, we're only humans. So all we can see is from our point of view and not from their point of view. So you don't know all of what a demon is capable of. That is important. Another one. 
Do not mock any of the entities. Do not be disrespectful to demonic entities or negative entities. Okay, it is very important. You never wanna lower yourself to that lower vibration because when you lower yourself to a lower vibration, you become an easy target. Um, yeah, you are not untouchable. You're not gonna be like the exorcist in The Exorcist movie where he's doing his thing and he's all fine and dandy. Um, yeah, no, no one is untouchable and you will get spiritually bitch slapped if you believe that. Don't do it for the fame and the fortune because let me tell you, a lot of people do not A, agree and B, believe in this kind of stuff. So it's not like, you know, you're gonna become famous or anything. Only the very few lucky people even get noticed, okay? It's not something that anyone can get rich off of and if you're doing it for the money you're not doing it for the right reasons and that brings me to my next thing do it for the right reasons do it out of love and light and faith because you'll need to have that in order to raise yourself to a higher vibration which will help you in turn you know connect with your spirit guides to connect with help um yeah It'll make it harder for negative entities to affect you more severely when your vibration is high or higher. Well, yeah, that is the advice I have for those, you know, trying to get in this field. I don't think an average person should be even getting involved in this field. I think it's too dangerous. I think... There are too many risks at hand. If a person is fully adamant about getting involved into demonology, do all your research first. That's all I'm gonna tell you. But yeah, that's all I have to say about that. So guys, if you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, leave them down below, okay? Um, I'm always curious to know what you have to say. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see y'all tomorrow, tomorrow, peace. If you like this type of video, I highly recommend watching the video where I discuss demons and what they are and how I perceive them.